big moron! Hey, moron! Duh! Look at me! I'm the Wawa Water Boy, duh! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo and Joe Bear with us. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. You know, I am a very optimistic person. I am... I believe that things happen for a reason and that things can always get better. I'm not only the glass half full guy. I'm happy that I even have a glass to put something in. So I'm the consummate consummate optimist. And there hasn't been much to be optimistic about. But there are things that are going on right now in the NFL that don't seem sustainable this has been a crazy year i don't believe that the san francisco 49ers who have the same record as we do one and two are that bad i just i just don't believe that i don't they're a better team than that they've got a lot of injuries and i know that they will bounce back this past weekend you had the giants went on the road in cleveland although that may say more about cleveland not being a good team. You had the uh, Sam Darnold, excuse me, not Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold led Minnesota Vikings, winning their third game in a row. Now remember, I think Sam Darnold won five straight to start a season with Carolina, and even having Carolina win a game on the road here. So this season is kind of crazy, and I keep forgetting the thing that I always say is, Don't get too excited or too upset by what you see the first month of football because you don't really know what you're going to get. And that's the truth. We know that our offense, the first four or five games, was abysmal. We looked at our offense, and our numbers were terrible. In the end, we ended up being the highest-scoring offense. C.D. Lamb ended up having record-breaking season for the Cowboys, and we made it to the playoffs. You don't know what you don't know. The Eagles started out 10 and 1 and then collapsed and have literally only won what 3 of their last 9 uh 3 of 3 and 9 something like that. So, you don't know what you don't know. There's time to turn this thing around. Just not much time. Because we play the day after tomorrow against the Giants. And right now, you have to look at the NFC East at the moment. Jaden Daniels breaks Dak Prescott's completion percentage as a rookie. He hit 90% of 90% of his passes. They scored 38 points. And you have to say that maybe Dan Quinn wasn't the problem with the Cowboys. Maybe Dan Quinn, we should have listened to what he said instead of saying he's a bum, that the Cowboys didn't have a sense of urgency. You know, because this is where... You can look and say, Dan Quinn, at the moment, has taken a franchise that has been inept and changed the attitude in one offseason. That he's instilling his defense, although they gave up 33 yesterday. But his offense, Cliff Kingsbury, rookie quarterback, starting out right now, that's not to say they're going to finish that way. I don't know that that is sustainable. But you look at this and say, They've done some good things that they've gone through and they've made some adjustments in bringing in players. What we get, and this is where we realize at the moment, our running game is ass. There's no other way to put this. We cannot run the football at all. And as long as we continue to not be able to do that, that's putting more pressure on your quarterback and your one weapon who doesn't seem to be able to handle pressure well. 
It's not a recipe for success. Now, I'm trying to understand why it is, you know, yesterday, Jerry Jones basically poo-pooed the idea of um, Dalvin Cook being elevated because, as Jerry Jones said it, <laughs> said yesterday, you know, it's a short week and, you know, uh, I don't see changes on the roster. I don't think uh, this is the time that you have any real serious roster adjustments, Jones said this morning. So I don't think so. It's a short week for sure. Now, I'm trying to understand something here. Because it's, explain this one to me. So, Dalvin Cook was signed around the same time that Linville Joseph was, wasn't he? Hasn't he played? Dalvin Cook was signed around not long after we traded for Jordan Phillips, didn't he? He played in a couple of games, and then we put him on the practice squad for an alleged injury. Wasn't he signed about the same time that Carl Lawson, who was elevated last week and brought up and played? But Dalvin Cook, we can't bring him up? That he's not ready? When everything about you is, we'll just grab a player, plug him in, and play him next week. I'm trying to understand how it is that we literally say that Dalvin Cook can't produce at least as much as Deuce Vaughn, who has seven carries for 20 yards. Are we? Is that where we are? I'm just trying to understand. If you're telling me that you signed Dalvin Cook and we're here week number four and you say he's not, then why do we sign him? Why, why, why do we sign him? Clearly, we're having a big problem, and we need to try and help protect our investment. You know, everybody's out here, you know, and, and this is where <laughs> Jerry Jones is genius because the masses, and I, I see, I get all the texts from, you know, from friends and emails and everything, and all I see in them are Dak sucks. Dak stole money. Dak Prescott, trade the bum, get rid of him. He sucks. You know, if we just had somebody else. I literally had somebody watching Cincinnati that's 0-3 yesterday and say, trade Jack for Joe Burrow. It's like, bro, they're 0-3 too. What, what do you think he's going to do by changing the quarterback? We lead the league in yards, passing yards right now, passing yards. We are the worst in running the football. That makes us average. We can't get much more production, even though we only have one wide receiver. We're not getting separation with our receivers. You, you, just take a look at everything that's possible to fix. Because, you know, trading quarterbacks with a quarterback who just got paid is not an option. You can, you can just take that off the table. It's not an option. Cutting Dak is not an option. So let's try and work on some solutions of things that we can actually do. You can trade for another weapon that has a mental fortitude when the pressure's on. You can do that a lot easier than you can trying to trade a guy that you just signed. You can do that. You can at least bring up Dalvin Cook. Because here, here's the thing right here. Here's the thing, okay? It's, what, the 24th of September? 24th of September? We have... This game is the last game we have in September. Then we got 10 days off. You only have a few games before the trade deadline. And you need to find out, is Dalvin Cook viable that can help answer our problems? Or do we need to go elsewhere before the November 5th trade deadline? You're telling me that at this point, Dalvin Cook hasn't learned five formations where he can play five plays? Is that honestly what you're going to tell me? That you sign, then if that's the case, then your whole philosophy of signing defensive linemen that are experienced at the end of training camp 
is 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 null and void too. That that shouldn't be going on. They should still be on the practice squad. So I'm trying to understand. Here it is. Jerry Jones says we don't really have a problem here, even though we are the worst in the NFL. Let's be clear here. We are the worst in the NFL. We've got Stephen Jones basically giving the dreaded vote of confidence to Mike McCarthy. We are now having Micah Parsons throwing the coaching. If you listen to his podcast yesterday, saying that it's coaching when he, or, or he did, wait, let, let me say that I'm, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. He kind of talked about how Carolina got a win with Sam Darnold and, you know, the Giants and things. And he talked about how teams that are coached to win games. He didn't say that the Cowboys weren't, but you can infer that the Cowboys are losing and getting their ass handed to them, that you're saying that maybe it's the coaching and maybe there's a problem between him and Zimmer versus Dan Quinn. I don't know, but that's the inference that I make. If I'm wrong, I apologize, Micah Parsons, but that's the way I take it. The other thing he kind of said, though, was, you know, we had talent before that would overcome the coaching, which is still kind of throwing the coaching under the bus. And now it's throwing the ownership and the front office for basically saying we don't have the talent to succeed. So looking at those two things, to me, he threw shade. If, if I'm wrong, Mike, again, I apologize uh, for that. But that's the way I look at it. And if it's misconstrued, then maybe the problem is, is we shouldn't be out talking in social media. Then that way there is no misunderstanding. We have time to write the ship. This is, I don't want to say that, that this is a, you know, a trap game because we can't call it a trap game because we're not good enough to say that we should be beating anybody at this moment. When you are one of the worst teams at stopping the run and one of the worst teams running the ball, you're not a good team. You're not anywhere close to being a good team. And chances are you're just not going to win. That is a recipe for disaster. And this is where they've got to turn this thing around. Today is the only real practice and game planning for this game, tomorrow's travel day to New York. And you play on Thursday. There's no time to change much of anything. And maybe Jerry Jones is right about that. Um, but these guys got to look within and say, I have to do my job. As, <laughs> as Mike has said, you know, can't play hero ball. Everybody needs to be responsible for their gap and their assignment. And that goes for Micah too. Because I saw some times where Micah's got outside contain. And by that, outside contain means I don't let anything get past me on the outside. Nothing gets past me on the outside. Because if they do, if they can get the edge, it's going to be a big play. And a lot of times, Micah had that assignment. And Micah is crashing hard on the inside, and you're seeing the flow run right past him. So nobody on that defense is free from criticism. Nobody is. And this starts from the top on down because this goes back to the Joneses that don't recognize. Yes, you have to pay a quarterback. But you know something? I believe Joe Burrow is $55 million this year, right? Joe Burrow? $55 million? They're owing three? I'm just saying they're owing three? Okay. I'm going to say Trevor Lawrence is $55 million this year, I believe. And I believe they've lost the last eight games. And they're 0-3. And nobody's saying anything about get rid of those guys. Nobody's saying get rid of those guys or you can't pay those guys or anything like that. They only say that Dak Prescott. 
that that the Cowboys couldn't build a team because they paid that guy. Okay, be that as it may. When you hear Jerry Jones say, we couldn't pay Derrick Henry, it was, I don't know if it wasn't we couldn't pay or we weren't willing to pay. You know, if you want something, and Jerry Jones knows this, Jerry Jones knows this. If you want something, you find a way to get it. I've never had a whole lot of money to work with. I have never had a whole bunch of money to work with. But I figure out how I can scrimp and save to get what I want. The Red Brick House, I didn't get a loan from the bank to do that. My wife was like, when are we going to work on that thing? So we ain't got the money to do this thing. But we figured out, okay, if I do a little extra work here on this project here, I can take, take you know, $1,000 from that job and I can put it towards the red brick house, okay? Maybe if I do, you know, this over here, if I do the plumbing work, you know, I can save me about $10,000 and I can get the plumbing in. You know, you end up, you know, taking and figuring out where you can save money to be able to get what you need to go ahead and do the job. And when Jerry Jones says we couldn't afford him, how much was Zeke Elliott's contract this year? How much is Trey Lance's guaranteed money this year? $5.3 million? $5.3. How much is Zeke? About another four? Right there. So if you're telling me you could have had Derrick Henry here or Trey Lance and Zeke, which one, which one is the answer there? And that's the kind of stuff we're dealing with. We have this whole thing because, see, Jerry Jones basically at first, oh, well, we paid CD and we paid Dak, so we can't afford those other guys. Well, you were the one that signed Zeke Elliott to the mega contract that blew up your cap. You were the one that signed Jalen Smith. You were the one that signed, you know, Michael Gallup. You were the one that made all of these moves. You're the one that gave away Amari Cooper for a fifth round pick and said, let's sign Michael Gallup because, you know, that, that's a bargain. You're the one who signed Terrence Steele to a big contract after having an injury. And then you brush it off onto somebody else. Now, all of this venom, as I said, I'm an optimist. If the Cowboys can find a way to get a road win, maybe getting away from AT&T, which has been the site of some vicious crime on the team and the fans the last three go-rounds, maybe being in New York, will be able to give them a little peace of mind on a short week that they still have a bad taste in their mouth from these last two games that they can be focused in on trying to beat the New York Giants, which are looking at this as saying, we can get to 500, make a name for ourselves, and make the Dallas Cowboys, especially Mark Holmes, cry. That if you can do this, this will give you a little bit of breathing room to have a little few extra days here, like a mini bye week to get your shit together to go into October and make some adjustments and maybe, I don't know, be able to bring up Dalvin Cook. But right now, we need to throw all of this back to the Cowboys and let them know that we're not happy with this thing because this is... Shit going downhill really, really fast. And the Joneses, you know, we talk about the coaches losing the locker room. Well, I think the team is losing the fans. So let's see. <laughs> let's get a little bit more. Let's pile on just a little bit more before we get out of here. It's pretty crazy. Afterwards, they were even Micah in the game, Parsons, the what's this all about? Right now, we got people just trying to be Superman. Right now, it's just not in unison. I don't feel like I should be telling another grown man to consistently be accountable. At some point, they got to take it within themselves. So every day within ourselves, we got to say, did we get better? Did I get better today? I can't talk faces. Swag, um, 
the, the look on the faces of the gentlemen speaking on the field, I, I, I can imagine it gets heated. You're in the arena and you're getting embarrassed. They made it close late. But what, in your estimation, is going on on the, that side of the ball in Dallas right now? A lot, of, a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. And when you have players talking about everybody just need to do their job, all, we've heard all this before. It's the cliche terms of we getting our ass whipped. <laughs> That's what it means. Like, it's, it's and, and, and two, when you get to the sideline and you start talking about who's doing what, and, and, and I, I would have loved for Micah not to even mention guys or trying to be Superman. I think that's always something that you leave for the locker room and you have that discussion with your team because now it, it, it separates, right? The player that's saying that, mm -hmm. you got to go look at film too. Right. And there's some plays on film with Michael mm -hmm. that, di that didn't look well and didn't fit what, what they're probably trying to do defensively. I just, I, I think right now, and I've been a part of, 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 of locker rooms where when you can't get the run stop, and you feel like you're being physically brutalized, it turns into finger pointing. Yeah. And if you ask you any go. coach, any player in any organization, when finger points start happening, you on your way out of there, boss. Jason, when you start pushing them, <laughs> when you start pushing them and they can't stop you, I, that has to be the most you did not the, have the to best ask feeling there is. Question like that. Yeah, I'm just asking. You did he not has, well, he was smiling. There's real nothing big more he I made, love than made, pushing it on another grown man <laughs> and just taking it over. <laughs> yes, Scott, you are absolutely correct. So that's more. <laughs> yeah, Liz, I, there is no greater feeling than when you're taking over the line of scrimmage and the offensive line. I that's mean, it, huh? yeah, it's that's how. It, well, it, when you're dominating the line of scrimmage yep. at will, yes. um, and they got I mean, on both sides, Baltimore is multifaceted. It ain't like it's a sim it ain't a simple you're thing right. to stop. They got Lamar and they got Derrick Henry. What they faced last week with Kamara, they couldn't <laughs> stop that either. They got to get something fixed. They got to figure it out. But yeah. It's been yeah. fun watching the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah guys. Uh, this might be the last one for me. Yeah. Um, you know, when you think about where the Dallas Cowboys were at the end of the season, mm -hmm. right? We saw some of these signs. You go back to Miami in prime time last year, ran the football down Dallas's throat. You get into the playoffs, can't stop a nosebleed, whether it's the pass or the run. Mm. We say all offseason, how have you fixed these things? But there was no signs that they were fixed. They play the Cleveland Browns, who we now know is also awful. Not right? great. Not and so great. we felt, mm -hmm. hey, maybe we were wrong. Yeah. Maybe we jumped the gun. Maybe Jerry Jones was all in. Guess what? We were right we the were entire offseason. They didn't do enough. You think about this offense trying to figure out ways to make plays if C.D. Lamb isn't having a great day. They struggled finding another option. And eventually Tobert and Turpin made some plays late in the game. Defensively, there were times. What do we say? Oh, Baltimore, be tricky. When Derrick Henry's in the game, you can't just line him up and eye in a run formation and give it to him. Lies you tell. Yeah. They walked out there. They said we're going to come out in 22 personnel. That's mm -hmm. two backs. Two tight ends. We don't even care who the wide receiver is. Everybody's screaming. You know what I'm screaming in the back, Scott? What are you screaming? It's a run! Mm -hmm. Run! Run! And you know what the Baltimore Ravens did? They, they said, we they, ain't going to check. We're going to turn around. We're going to hand it off to Derrick Henry because they're run not it up your physical throat. enough to stop us. I feel like y'all get like an extra boost of energy though when y'all talking about them and how bad. I'm going to be honest. You know, just, you know, the problem is, it's not that we get an extra boost of energy talking about them. It's that run games get an extra boost of energy when, when they play. play them. Exactly. That's the problem. I was the same way. I was the same way when the Lions ended it in the in the overtime game. Yeah. Whenever a you line were. is, you were. when you do, they know you're running it and you're still able to yeah. get it done. I'm gonna be. Let excited. me say this too, Scott. Yep. Let me say this because I've heard this across the airwaves about how Dallas is built. Mm -hmm. They're built to play ahead. Realistically, in the NFL, you ain't gonna get a lot of leads. Okay. When you can't and stop them. have to play, and RC has heard me say this. What happens to Dallas when they have to play straight up defense, where it's going back and forth, and you three, three up and three out, and they three up and three out? When teams have their whole gambit of their playbook, and they are able to run the plays that they want to run as opposed to the situation mm -hmm. causing them to shrink their playbook. That was the issue last year against Green Bay. Everybody talks about the great day that Jordan Love had, and it was phenomenal. Green Bay ran it down their throat. Yep. Arizona Cardinals ran it down their throat, and it was the first telltale sign. Mm -hmm. 
the, the, this is who they are. Yeah. In the National Football League, it, it, red zones, if you can hold teams to three, that's that's the name of the game. Right now, Dallas has allowed ten trips to the red zone. They've given up nine touchdowns. Yeah. That's the worst in the National Football League. That's because they – Village are, bicycle. Yep, there you go. They ain't wrong. They ain't wrong. The recipe for disaster is, right now, believe it or not, the Cowboys have 851 yards passing. With all of the drops that we've had, and you can call it in garbage time, and maybe it is garbage time stats, 851 yards, number one. Running the football, we're 31st. That is a recipe that is unattainable. It just is. Unless you decide to get another weapon that's going to be a playmaker, it's it's just not going to happen. We'll see what we have this week against the Giants. I can't call them the New York stinking Giants right now the way we stink. And I can't say... I'm still amazed that we're a five-point favorite going into this game. So this is, I hope, rock bottom and that we have nowhere else to go but up. I'm Mark Holmes, and, well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's rough right now. It's rough here in Joe Boo's Man Cave. I will see you all soon. Peace out.